awake. You are trying to go through the door, right? Oh, uh, uh, whoops, wrong game. <coughs> Hi there! Welcome to this video making of in-stock doors. I don't know how you got here exactly, since this was supposed to be made about 7 months ago, but that's not important. And, uh, is this voice sharing thingy still on? I think it is, let me turn it off quick. <laughs> Turning this off for a sec, changing the pitch of my voice. Oh, that's the wrong direction, other way. Uh, oh boy, now that's too low. Let me put it a bit higher. Ah, much better. Now let's change this background quick. The character in the scene and... Hello? You son of a b Hello there, my name is Michelo, and the character you see on screen right now is Barb. I will be your host through videos like this one that aren't related to my main game project that you should totally go follow and support. And in today's video, I'll talk about my process and my experience during the community game jam, which happened right around... Oh... Yeah, like I said, this video should have been made more than half a year ago. Ouch. All the footage is there, on my PC. 33 gigs of it, in fact. But I had a big college game assignment to make with a team right after this jam ended. Which was a fun game, but I'm not totally proud of it. Then there were the Christmas holidays, which I was busy with my family and working on my main game project. And then guess what? College stroke back with an extremely busy first half of a semester. But now that I am in my March break, well, not anymore, but with all that pandemic stuff happening right now in the world, I am still home, so I can still work on my stuff. Anyway, I think it is finally time for me to make this video. So, I welcome you to how I made instructors in less than a week. I'll start off by saying that this was my first ever game jam in my entire life. I wanted to try one for some time, but I never really had the chance to do it. Thanks, cool. So after hearing about the community game jam, lasting 7 days and happening right before the start of my semester, I immediately jumped in. There was around 1050 entries at the end, so I had some competition during it for sure. Especially for a first jam. Anyway, I slapped the join button, and the first thing I had to do was to... Of course, the first step in the process was to get a theme. So I waited for the 24th of August, opened up the jam page right in front of my eyes, and got ready for the reveal. So what's it gonna be, what's it gonna be, what's it gonna... What? You know, you should never really try and guess a jam's theme. Seriously, don't! But at least, it was vague enough to let a lot of potential game ideas come true. So with all of those flowing in my mind, it was a good moment to... The first idea that came to me was some kind of game where you fly a little triangle and shoot stuff. I don't know where that came from. But I don't know I will implement the game is a liar part, which was obviously the main thing for this jam. But then, out of nowhere, there's one game that popped in my head which ended up being the main inspiration for it. The Sunny Parable. It's a game where you always start at the same place and you have a narrator trying to guide you on a path, but you can always deviate from it at any point and find tons of different endings. So then it clicked. I was going to make a multipath platformer where you go through doors and have a narrator that always lies. You could listen to him and get one ending, or you could try different things to change it. It will be a 2D game since 3D modeling can take a long time, even no poly stuff. Hmm, yes, that's a really good pace for this jam. And saying I found my main idea in only half an hour, who would have thought? But knowing this was a game jam, I couldn't stand here much longer thinking. I had to act fast, so I noted that down and it was finally time to... Very quick disclaimer, if you want to play this without being spoiled, don't watch this video first. There will be spoils for the entire game and its endings. Links to play in the description. I'll wait for you here in the meantime. You're done playing? Or you don't care about spoils? Well, let's go then! When I start a game project, I usually do some prototyping first with basic assets like squares, cubes, etc. But I don't know why this time I started by making the player sprite sheet for some reason. So if you don't know me, or see from my look on the screen, I'm obsessed with birds. And knowing it's pretty much the only thing I'm good at creating, I ended up making a burp character for this game. So right after that, I booted up Unity, created a new project that I named Instruct Doors without thinking about it too much, installed post-processing, the awesome Amplify Shader Editor, which was allowed since it's a generator with controls over the output, tweaked the product settings, built my folder structure, and I started scripting right away. Oddly enough, the first thing I started making but didn't finish yet was a distorted pause camera effect, 
That's because I plan to have an ending where if you go through doors very fast without listening to the narrator, he pauses the game and resets it. But then I immediately realized that there were more important stuff to make. Like, uh, moving the main character? No. Knowing that, I went on programming the character's animations, made a quick player controller, and boom, I had a bird bouncing on my screen. I then made the doors frame, imported the dialogue's font, and started thinking about the level system. Here's how I planned the main level script. There will be different sets of dialogue text with voice lines linked to each of them. At each line, some events could happen, like a change in the music, some object changing in the level, some door modifying their exit point, enabling the player's control at a precise line, etc. Also, some actions from the player could lead to a dialogue set to happen, like when he dies for the first time, he kills something, etc. For the first day, I was only going to focus on making the main dialogue and the doors work. The dialogue system ended up working quite well. The text even appeared over time, instead of just popping up instantly in your face. Now, transitioning between levels. I wanted the camera to slide up to the next room at each door. So to make things easy, I stuck a render texture filling the entire camera view just under the level. When going through a door, I rendered the view onto this texture, teleported the camera down there, swapped the level, and smoothly transitioned the camera back up. Smooth, easy, effective. And this is where day one ended. Things are moving quite fast already. Let's go to day two. At the start of the second day, I quickly managed to complete the level loading system when entering doors. The transitions ended up very smooth and quite satisfying. Right after that, I made a quick tile screen just for the time being. After a couple of visual modifications later, it ended up as the final one. Also, just to not have a boring dark blue background, I decided to make a little brick tile for it. Yeah, I know, they ended up a bit wonky, but it's also my first time doing pixel art, so don't judge. Please. It was also going to be dark pink-ish at first, but I ended up with a dark blue instead, which looked much better. Quickly added a little vignette on the side, and the game already looks almost like the final product. Yay. Now that I had a basic level manager, it was time to start making levels. The first level was a no-brainer. Introduction on what to do, two doors, go. Oh, actually, two doors? If you've played the game, you know that only one of them actually works, right? But why? Well, you see... I had planned two routes, one where you follow the first instruction, and another where you don't. Sadly, I ran out of time to make the second path, so instead of saying that the top door leads to nowhere in the voice line, I replaced it with That doesn't work anyway. Which, to be fair, does the job perfectly. At the end of day two, I had the ending where you go too fast for the narrator down. I had to do some more stuff in the level manager for the path to work, but with that, the manager was 95% done already. I also made the walk, jump, and landing sounds for the character, added some cloud particles when the player makes a step forward, and finally completed the glitchy pause effect for that narrator, I don't care, ending. So after day two, I was pretty much ready to make the rest of the levels. Unless... I realized that the game felt a bit lifeless. There wasn't really anything you could interact with, so I quickly designed a sword that the player could pick up and use. I modified the player's sprite sheet to fit the sword in, adapted the animations for it, added the ability to swing it in the code, and hop, you have a sword. Also added right after that the swing control on the main menu. But wait, what could we be able to attack? Well, I made some slimes that are enjoying their time too much so they could attack the player and the player could kill them. Simple as that. I could also set some slimes to drop their sword on the ground for pickup by the player. And fun fact, this was my first time coding some AI. So that's a milestone. Then, for one final time, I edited the level manager script so it could detect if a slime is killed or if a certain amount of them got slayed, or any other types of events a script could come. With all the required elements for the levels, it was truly time for one of the most time-consuming parts. Making each level, and each path, for each ending. Oh boy. All of the level making lasted until about the end of day 4. I obviously encountered some errors in some of my scripts while making my levels, but they were quickly fixed. I also made some extra assets during the level making process, like a pile of coins for both treasure ending and... Wait... I've seen this logo before. Is this a shameless plug to my other game Project Fly that I'm currently developing very hard right now? Yes. Yes it is. Day 3 went very quick at that point. So let's talk day 4. There were two main things made during that day. First off was the game's soundtrack. I opted for an 8-bit type of song because my graphics are, well, 8-bit, if it wasn't obvious. Still jamming, to be honest. With that, 
I also made a music manager so that level manager could interact with the song currently playing. Like change it, stop it, pause it with a slowdown effect, resume it with a ramping back up effect, and more. Second of, I made an introduction animation whenever one starts up. With the help of a little fader script, a camera and some black bars to add to the DRAMATIC effect, I ended up with a more than acceptable intro. Though the camera movement was only done on day 5, so let's jump to then. So on the start of day 5, I completed the camera's intro animation. I had to write yet another script for making this work, but this simply cannot be worse than my amount of scripts in my main game project anyway. Trust me, I just have way too many. <laughs> But then came the one thing I feared, because I knew this would take forever. <gasps> Project got corrupted! Well, at least that didn't happen, because that would indeed suck. And also I forgot to back up the project like an idiot. But that's not what I feared at that moment. What I'm talking about are voice lines. I can't even count how many I had to record. What I did was, I started recording some silence for noise cancelling, read what I wrote in the level manager a couple times per line, removed the noise, kept the best take and repeated the process on each level in each path. This was an absolute nightmare to do. If you look through the text file I wrote down all of the separate lines, you'll see what I mean by nightmare, especially for a game jam like this one. I'll skip through this day really fast because the entirety of it was dedicated to recording the voice lines. I recorded, cleaned, exported, and put each clip one by one in the game, at their respective dialogue line, in their respective levels. And when I say the entire day, I really mean the entire day. Well, you know what? I'll let you listen to every single dialogue set at the same time and you tell me how many they are, alright? <laughs> I now had officially less than 24 hours to submit my game for the jam, and the fundamentals of the game were there. It was 100% playable, but there was some stuff that still felt kinda off. Like for example, uh, I had no art for the walls. Thing is, I didn't have time to make an entire task set by hand, so it felt impossible to do. But then, in one of my Facebook groups, which to be fair, I never use Facebook apart from mandatory job stuff and when there's no other communication method with someone, a friend sent me a link to a free software called Tile Setter. And let me tell you, it saved my life. I only had to make a single tile and the software generated every single possible tile style. So shout outs to him. So with that, it was time to polish up my game. I made a quick tile set and proceeded with replacing every single boring gray wall with those beautiful tiles. The graphical difference is really night and day, and I'm really glad I took the time for this. As for the rest of the polishing done, I added a sound effect when you kill a slime. And yes, I am aware that if you don't kill anyone in the final room and go in the door, your ears will have a great time. I also added a sound when the floor blocking the hole appears in level 1. A little feature I added on the final day was the possibility to reset the game manually by double tapping the escape key, useful when you mess up an ending you are trying to get. Or go back to the main menu by holding it for 3 seconds. The final thing I added was a credit screen when you press C on the main menu. I created some quick Pixar YouTube, Twitter and GameJob logos and added them onto that screen with my account names next to them. And with that made, I did a final build of the game, playtested each ending and levels one last time and I proceeded to submit my game. Yay! It was now time to play the waiting game, because now we were at... Because this was a ranked game jam, it had a two week review process where every participant could play and review each game in six different categories. Game design, fun, innovation, theme, graphics, and audio. Since there were 1050 entries, it was just impossible to review everything in two weeks. Even more so for me since I started back my college semester right after the submission deadline. But I still got the chance to play and rate 31 different games in 14 days. I commended my experience on all of them in their respective comment section. Some were actually very clever. Some had really nice art and audio, and some were kinda hard. All games that I tried had a unique charm to them. I tried to review them as fair as possible without being too much of a fanboy. Oh, um, fanbabe. Damn, I burned these vids, darn it. When it comes to my submission, I received a ton of positive comments saying about how people love the humor, the endings, the narrator, the audio. Aww, that's so kind of them. What? Hold up a sec! I swear I turned you off at the beginning of the video, so how are you here now? Whoops, sorry. Anyway, everyone seems to have liked it, which is really flattering. 
there was even a small Twitch streamer that played it live on his channel. Shout out to Tinas for playing my game live. Though you'll have to believe my words, because it's been so long since the stream that the VOD isn't available anymore. Darn it. So this review period lasted for two weeks, like I said, meaning that on the 14th of September, we'd get... So this is it. Time to see how everyone did in the jam. There are prizes for winners in each category and a grand prize for the overall winner. I came here only for fun, not for winning, but it will still be a great bonus if I manage to snag a podium spot. So anyway, I waited for the day, laptop opened during my lunch break at my weekend job, waited until the exact second where the final rankings will show, and... How the f Guys, remember, this jam had 1050 entries when it ended. My game ended up number 7 in the fun category. Number 7. Out of 1050 other potentially great games that stop 1%. Needless to say, my jaw dropped when I saw this. My first ever game jam and I ended up very high in the leaderboards. That's unbelievable. I know this might not seem like much, but seeing how well my game was received and the rankings that came with it means a lot to me. It simply motivated me to pursue in game dev. Right now, I'm almost at the point where I could truly make a living out of it. Recently, I participated in a 48 hour intercollegiate game jam with 3 other team members, and we managed to win the first prize there, which was a thousand dollar Canadian for the entire team, so $250 each. And just recently, I got hired by a game company to help them make their VR multiplayer social game, which is actually nuts! The only thing really slowing me down right now is college, as you may know. And you should know if you follow my Twitter. My main game project's development is really getting slowed down by it. But believe me, once I'm out of this mess, I am diving headfirst into my passion without worrying about writing stupid, useless essays that nobody cares about anyway. On that note, I'll be leaving this video here. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making this game. It'll always have a special place in my heart. And it totally deserves a spot on my PC case with my other creations. Yes, I actually engraved my stuff on my side panel, because I could. Hey look, I'm here too. So thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Ciao!